Warning. The following video contains spoilers for Downfall Remake 2016. Extremely graphic depictions of death will also be shown. Viewer discretion is advised. If you are weak of heart or stomach, it is strongly advised that you do not watch this video, as traumatic events will be depicted. Quiet Haven Hotel is a hermetically engendered reflection of Joe's determination to restore life back to Ivy, and thus, their relationship. You need to leave right now. Something bad is coming. Yeah, the storm. And that's exactly why we can't leave. There are worse things than the storm, you know. The fact that you can never leave the hotel because of the downfall of rain engenders the insular nature of the environment. Joe can never leave Quiet Haven Hotel, not because of the rain, but because the location doesn't exist in reality. You may argue that Agnes does manage to leave the hotel. However, the clinical nature of the maze that she finds herself in coincides with the neurological nature of the brain. And the conclusion, where Joe attempts to resurrect Ivy using electronic stimulation. The name Quiet Haven derives from the private sanctuary of the Helen Road apartment basement. In The Cat Lady, we see that the basement is not used by the residents, as evidenced by the cabinet blocking the door. However, we later learn in Downfall that this is where Joe took Ivy in order to restore their relationship and her life. A common point of contention for Downfall is the ambiguity of the plot. Whilst the original game, released in 2009, was even more ambiguous, there are still some threads in the remake that are left seemingly untied. Who is Agnes? Who was Sophie? What is the purpose of Joe's journey within Quiet Haven Hotel? This video will analyse these key points in an attempt to provide answers that will better your understanding of the 2016 game Downfall. In order to explore the character of Agnes, we first must examine Ivy. Ivy is the reason for Joe's ambition. She is the sole purpose for him continuing his violent endeavour. However, unbeknownst to the player, Ivy is already dead. When the couple first arrive at the hotel, they appear to get into an argument which is entirely one-sided as Ivy remains tight-lipped. In this situation, the analogy, the dead don't speak, can certainly be applied. Later, when Ivy breaks her silence, she mentions maggots in one of her pieces of dialogue. Maggots are parasites that feed and fester within the flesh of the dead, further lending merit to Ivy's deceased state. How did Ivy die? It is not made clear within the events of the game, though it is heavily implied that she starved herself to death. In their apartment, when you control Susan, you can find chains attached to a chair at the dining table, suggesting that Joe was attempting to force-feed Ivy. There are also allusions to the fact that the bathroom door had a lock on it to prevent Ivy from depositing her recent meal into the toilet bowl with the considered press of two fingers down her throat. Why did Ivy apparently starve herself to death? She was sick, with either anorexia or bulimia. Pinpointing the source of Ivy's eating disorder is difficult. However, the prologue suggests that it manifested as a result of her mother forcing her onto a diet. As Ivy grew older, she was faced with a barrage of criticisms from men, media, the world at large, and her own reflection. These doubts and fears are represented as the four Sophies hidden within the hotel premises. Thus, 
they are a physical manifestation of her illness. This explains why Joe must kill them to get to her. We are presented with the information that the Sophies are memories, however, whose memories are not quite made clear. Let's begin by analysing young Sophie. She is the Sophie that exists before. In her words, everything went to shit. Jo kills her by either directly administering or witnessing the injection of a lethal substance. The second is an obese Sophie that has her entrails hanging out already. She is killed indirectly with a gas explosion. The third is a Sophie obsessed with Harrison, a man who scorns her advances, yet she still pines over him. Third Sophie is killed with a heavily toxic laxative. The final Sophie is the climax, the monster in the mirror who has lost all humanity. Joe butchers this Sophie with a chainsaw in the basement of the Helen apartment complex. All this violence in an attempt to pursue the impossible. The madness has surely taken over. This madness is referred to directly a few times within the game. Whilst there is no direct statement, it is heavily implied that Joe is suffering from madness or hysteria, directly linking to the namesake title, Downfall. At the beginning of the game, Joe presents as a shining paragon of hope. However, with each violent act he commits, he becomes more and more despicable. From the unintentional roasting of a cat, to the deliberate butchering of the final Sophie, Joe slowly suffers a psychological breakdown, a downward spiral toward his insular psychosis. There are many broken mirrors within the hotel property. We can now understand why, free of guilt from his actions, fully believing he is doing this all for Ivy, the true monster in the mirror is Joe. He can't confront his own truth, the truth that he, the man who sought to play God, is the real monster. Now let us return to Agnes as we unravel more and more of the intent of the plot. Agnes is resurrected by Joe and Dr. Z, and it is never truly explained why she exists. However, with the dark nature of the narrative, Agnes was a necessity to orient the player amidst the violence. Her cheery attitude and optimism is what allows the player to relate to the situations within the game, more so when she begins to question the morality of Joe's actions. Agnes is the only female presented in the game that doesn't bear the colour red. This is important as it symbolises the pure and innocent nature of her character. We later learn through Joe's interpretation that Agnes is the part of Ivy that he fell in love with. If this is the case, Agnes could be seen as being Ivy's way of trying to stop Joe from his mad task. Agnes meets Ivy within the cerebral maze whilst she is being pursued by the Axeman, who we later learn is Joe. She then meets the Queen of Maggots. But only the dead may truly enter the Queen of Maggots realm, as we can see with both Susan in the Cat Lady, and here with Agnes and Downfall. You may argue that Joe also sets foot inside this house, however, it may be considered that this is also part of his delusion. If we consider Agnes to be the good part of Ivy, we can then begin to see how all the female characters are representative of reflections of Ivy's persona. Even the manageress, who represents the sexuality of Ivy while she was alive. We can purport that the manageress is part of the dead Ivy because of the silhouette of the manageress hanging herself in her office. This is yet another projection of truth 
through the delusions of Joe's downfall. In conclusion, downfall represents the gradual decline of Joe's humanity as he attempts to find a way to restore life to his already deceased wife. We have explored the complex links of Ivy's death through her eating disorder, the true nature of the Sophies, and who Agnes is within this video. I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video all the way through to the end. If you have any theories of your own, or would like to discuss this great game, please leave me a comment. If you want to play Downfall yourself, please follow the links in the description. Thank you, and I will see you all next time, perhaps for another analysis. But who knows?